So this is our case study. We're going to be talking about the absorption stripping operations. So remember that absorption is essentially gas having X goes to L and stripping is L having X goes to the gas phase. Okay, so they are pair operations in order to achieve one operation, the sweetening of sour gas. So let me explain you, sour gas is any high content sulfur gas, typically hydrogen sulfide, and it can be also uh, account for the carbon dioxide. They are said to be acid gases because they can form acid in aqueous uh, material. So H2S can go in water and act as an acid. The protons will be delivered and CO2 can form carbonic acid, which you know will throw away also protons, which is the acid. So why are we interested in removing this? Because first things first, this is a high contaminant and this is also a high, well, not that high, but also a contaminant. What we want to do is to remove these from our gases. So sour gas can be a hydrocarbon mix, CXY. You can be talking about natural gas, petroleum liquefied gases, whatever type of gas you are interested, not only those, but those are the common ones, you can remove the sourness. So sweetening, as you can imagine, is the decrease in such quantities. What we want to do is to remove this material. This is done via the amine gas sweetening. What happens here is that we add some amine solutions, which are going to interact with the acid and they form a complex, which is uh, let's say remove the hydrogen so that's the absorption we got the liquid which is the DEA MEA or so on and we see these are the two most common ones diethyl amine and monoethanol amine so what's happening is that there is a gas with X this is actually reactive amine because X will react with the liquid which is the amine to form the LX so gas is now free to go. This is the chemical absorption. So this is achieved in the first process. We're going to see this later on, no worries. And the stripping part is, of course, you don't want to throw away this liquid and means because these are your solvent, those are your raw materials. So what happens is that you bring them here, you try to condense all the amine possible, which is a lot, and some is lost as well as the acid gases, such as hydrogen sulfide and CO2. So these are non-condensable material, the liquid goes back, the low acid amine reacts with the high acid amines, and eventually what you will see is that at the bottom there is plenty of low acid amine, there is recycled just in case, and the idea is to recover the lean amine, and not only that, to reuse it right here. Okay, so I know this might be a very simple process, I like to use simple diagrams, but in real life what you're going to have is that there are plenty of absorbers maybe in different plants or different sites and what they do is they connect to a single stripper, larger stripper. Okay, so that's what happens in real life. These are the conditions, operating pressure should be high, this is theory, and the temperature should be low in order to maximize the absorption. This will minimize the stage requirements. From, uh, well, we're going to see that later on how stages are related to temperature pressure and to the binary system interaction. It also decreases the solvent flow rate, meaning that we need or we might need less L and also lowers the total size of equipment, which is achieved by the diameter and height. We're going to see that later on. Unfortunately, you know that in real life, this is the theoretical case, but according to econ economy and technical uh, conditions, what happens in real life is that we operate at the same pressure of the feed gas. Why? Because compression is very expensive and refrigeration is also very expensive. Also because it will not ensure a much better separation. So why expend that much money when you can achieve this as well? and the operating temperature is kept low but not that low 
so yeah of course there is some refrigeration but not that low let me explain you what happens in the absorber you will remove the hydrogen sulfide and CO2 we're going to focus mostly on the acid also there will be a, the amine let's say it's the ethylamine or monoethylamine according to the theory we're talking about there is gas liquid interaction and this is operated in countercurrent so let me clean this away countercurrent means that we have make up water which is the liquid as well as our linamine so liquid goes on the top will fall down according to gravity and our sour gas goes in the bottom will go up if the operation is carried out correctly we're going to have our sweet gas which is low in acid gases so this is mostly our final product now the amine solution in the inlet is called lean amine lean amine and should enter as stated before it gotta go on the top because we need counter operation the gas outlet as stated before is, will be the sweet gas and the amine solution in the outlet which is the rich amine is here why do we call this a rich because it has high hydrogen sulfide content or the high acid content we call this rich just to ensure that this is the amine mixture with rich acids we're going to do this could be our end of the product actually we can have a problem on absorption talking about this only this but the overall idea is to recover this rich amine so what we're going to do is bring it to the regenerator or stripper unit which is this one right here so we got the rich amine there's heat exchange right here so the lean amine and the rich amine interact between each other and the rich amine well, of course there's not going to change concentration only on temperatures they go on the top goes down also counter fluid operation so it falls down some liquid is going to condense right here and where is it some vapor is going to go up Hopefully you know guys that these are gases, not vapors. So they will remain as gases. So these will technically flash. There will be hydrogen sulfide and CO2 here. So when you condense the liquids, most of them will be still in gas phase. So they just go away. And the liquid will be rich amine, sorry, lean amine, low acid content amine. So it drops it interacts with the rich amine there is interaction eventually what you have here is a very low concentration of acids this is called the lean amine why lean because there is low content of acids it goes back and back please note that there is some makeup water because the process will lose some water and so on but the amines are recovered all the time okay here is the acid let me let me just review this sour gas the sour gases or acid gases will go up due to non-condensation as stated and the lean amine will be the outlet of this stripper unit which is actually the inlet of our absorption unit so now yeah now as you can see let's make our black box what you're having is sour gas let's say gas with x there's outlet of gas X remains here we get rid of X right here and that's everything we add some water just for makeup because in reality you're going to have some water going out but as you can see there is no going out of any of the amines amines remain on the system so this is the beauty of absorption and stripping operation